Hello everybody and welcome back to another bad reverse engineering video. Today we're looking at the leapfrog twist and shout multiplication tool that is aimed for college students. This sucker is better than any calculator you could ever buy. The device has about seven main parts. One being a speaker, one turn knob to turn it on, two turn knobs to get input from the user, one screen to show output, a volume control switch, and a button for calculating. There's even an aux port if you want to listen to some jams. Twist and shout multiplication. Get twist and shout multiplication. Get First we're going to take out the batteries by unscrewing here. Next we move to the speaker and we're going to unscrew the four screws around here. Then take out these three screws. Underneath the speaker here, there's four more screws. This gives access to the whole on-off knob. We're going to leave this knob and go back to the battery pack. Once you've taken the screws out of the battery pack, you can pop off the button. There's four screws where the button once was. Once those come off, this piece just pops right off. Now we're going to go back to this side with the speaker. There's two screws right here and right here. Once you've taken all these screws apart, you've really gotten as far under the device as you really can be. Everything else is connected by wires to circuit boards that can't be disconnected without cutting the wires off. As for all the pieces in this device, everything that is made out of plastics besides the screws, the spring, the circuit board inside, and the wires. The knobs work by turning these things right here, which are connected to the circuit board, which tells the computer what to do. The way the button works is as it's pressed into the device, it's connecting these two metal strips right here, which sends feedback to the circuit board. The speaker just puts out sound based on what the circuit board tells it to. Now we reassemble. Okay, well, I got it back to this point, but somewhere along the process of me disassembling it, I messed up the order of the wires inside there so this thing does not sit right on top of the board and I can't fully close this part. After I got that closed all I would need to do was push in the spring and the button again so that it would click and that's about it. Thanks for joining me on this reverse engineering journey.